Thank you for joining us today. This is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan citizen-based forum where we look at issues of interest to the Tri-Cities. First, I'd like to thank the Tri-Cities Community TV for making this program possible. Before we get started with today's interview, I'd also like to acknowledge that this program is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Coquitlam First Nations. We thank the Coquitlam people who continue to take care of these lands and all that is above and below. Today, we're talking to Daniel Wesley. Daniel, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Oh, our pleasure. So if I understand correctly, you were running for um, a position on the school board in School District 43. That's right. Yeah, I'm running as a school trustee for uh, School District 43. Position. School District. There are uh, um, trustee, of course. Um, maybe you can tell me a little bit about your background. Um, first of all, let's just start with that. Like, tell sure. me about tell me about you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm born in New Westminster, grew up in Surrey, moved here to Coquitlam five years ago. Um, I've got a background in, uh, in insurance and banking and, uh, and then in some disabled sports. Throughout the years, I've been, I've been uh, making myself available to different schools and uh, community groups to, um, to bring a, you know, my, my story of my involvement with sports and how those um, strategies cross over into real life um, um, needs and, and solutions. Okay, it, I, so I'm really interested in that. I want to know a little bit more about that. You're making yourself available to schools. I'm presuming talking to kids with regards to your disability. Is that is that what you mean? Well, well, I don't I don't uh, speak to too many schools these days. Okay. But um, but throughout my sporting career from the 70s, 80s, yeah. even until the early uh, 2000s. Um, I, um, I, you know, I used to present for a group called the Esteem Team, okay. and as an RBC Olympian, and okay. um, and I even did it on my own too, you know, just to, um, you know, tell kids that um, by having a good plan, mm -hmm. you know, listening to their intuition, and um, and and in doing that, anything's possible for them. So all kids. You, yeah. 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 So it's not just selective kids okay right. and my apologies for making assumptions that way but that's what this is about we're trying to learn as much as we can right about mm -hmm. about this so um, the position that you're looking uh, the the what you're running for is a um, I've lost the word is a, uh, a trustee so um, maybe you can tell me what it is that you hope to do in that position as a trustee for the school district? Well, I hope to be able to provide um, a bit of freshness and and a perspective that uh, that when the school district wants to, you know, make some priorities on on the structure, the programs that they do, or the or the buildings and and um, the after school things that uh, as school trustees. Are are in a position to help allocate those funds? Okay, so so what what are I, what I want to know? What I like to know about this sort of thing is more specifics. Like, where do you think that our school district needs that kind of help right now? Where does the school district need that kind of help? Well, you know, I think that there's been um, a bit of a divide in that. Uh, you know, the the programming now is kind of top down instead of bottom up. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, the parents aren't involved. Okay. And, and, and I think that if the parents got involved, then because they know their kids the best, mm -hmm. that they would um, be able to, um, you know, help with programming and, and support the kids. Right. So are you talking about more involvement by parents in terms of parents actually getting involved in it as well? Or are you talking about them talk them... Um, addressing uh, the places where there are holes in the in the school district? Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I do think that um, in providing an opportunity for parents like myself, I've mm -hmm. got two kids in grade five, mm -hmm. um, to be able to, um, you know, be aware of what's what's going on in, in the classroom and with their curriculum, that uh, when your kids come home, you can support them better. So, 
being aware of what's in the curriculum. Okay. Um, so who do you think might be letting us down in that case? Like, cause I mean, you said that it was top down. So, um, where, where is it, where, where is the, the divide happening, the break happening that's not working for parents? Well, I think the divide that's happening is that the, the school district and the, the programming is, is coming down from the school board and, and then the parents, even though they know their kids the best, yeah. they are not you know, part of that. They feel left out. And, and I think that's the biggest divide. They're feeling, feeling left out. So, be, uh, because I'm trying to figure out what that's gonna look like. Like, um, cause I think, I think it's a great idea where um, parents are more connected with the school and where parents are more connected with the teachers and um, have an understanding of what teachers are doing. That's, that is a tremendous thing. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how that, what that's going to look like and how that's going to happen. Right? Well, that's a good question. How is that going to happen? Well, I think that, um, you know, even at present, there are teachers that are um, reaching out to the parents, letting them know early what's happening within the class mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and letting them know ahead of time what, you know, what extracurricular activities are available. And, and so that is happening, and, and we're there just to continue that, that wave. Okay. It's, so in a, in a supportive way for teachers and the school system? Because, because I think that, you know, most of us are aware that um, the education system in the last probably 20 years has um, seen a cutback in funding for classrooms and uh, the money that's going to classrooms, the money that's going into the schools, we're seeing those kind of cuts, uh, and and it is affected all. Um, it is affected the product that teachers can create in a classroom. So, um, are you talking about building building a connection with helping parents? be connected to teachers so that they can speak to the government to fund that a little bit better so that we can we can have a stronger um, understanding of what's going on in classrooms or, or, or how how do you seem to approach it I know I'm, I'm saying a lot here but um, that's that seems to me to be the crux of the question is how are we going to bring these two groups together so that they can build a, a um, build the support from our are the fund the, the people who are funding it the most, which is the ministry, right? I, okay. I, so I guess I said a lot, and that wasn't really a question. That was um, my understanding of it. I wonder what your understanding of it is. Am I am I off base here with what I'm saying, or was I completely <laughs> incoherent in how I was saying it? Um, you were doing just fine. Uh, I just like to say that. Um, the the school system has been you know losing parents and been losing students over the last two decades sure and and you know and and it's a valuable opportunity as a child goes through school to to know that they they're getting exposed to the right kind of curriculum the mm -hmm. the right kind of um learning right the, the right kind of opportunities for them yeah and and, and parents need to have trust in the system. Mm -hmm. and, and trust comes with openness mm -hmm. and transparency. Mm -hmm. It comes with, um, you know, with, when your kid comes home and he's got a, a, some paperwork that he's got to have filled out, mm -hmm. you know, the parents want to embrace that and share that experience with their kids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's, that's really all we're here to do is to help them um, feel involved and engaged. Sure. Um, so, the, the, uh, from my understanding, the curriculum is all online, and so that any parent can actually uh, um, go in and look what the ministry's curriculum is. And so, all teachers are going to be working towards that, what's already online and has been there for quite some time. So, um, that exists. Um, it, it, so, my question is then, if it, it, uh, 
is where, wh what is the failure then? If that already exists, parents can do that. What, what's going to happen that's going to make that bond stronger? That's a good question. What is going to happen to improve that bond between parents yeah. and, and the, the school system? And the system? parents' understanding of, That's right. of what's there. And what, what's going to help that is open communication. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. And, and a two-way dialogue about okay. what's going on. All right. So people are engaged. Okay, okay. And so who, who do you see as the parents, or that the parents should be speaking to? Well, ultimately, they should be speaking to their kids. To the, the parents should because be speaking the children, to their kids. The children know, I mean, the parents know their children the best. Right. And when that child comes home and he's got him some, you know, project to do or, or you know, some aspect to his class that he's maybe, you know, against the wall on, mm -hmm. Um, the parents are there to support them and then they can look online and see what that curriculum is mm -hmm. and and how it's how it's being um, you know translated into real life uh, experiences for their child for their child right and and then then that that that's an opportunity for that dialogue to open up and as a school trustee mm -hmm. what we do is is we we ensure that the you know extracurricular programming and uh, you know the 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 buildings and the the opportunities that that the the finances behind the the whole business of mm -hmm. running a school mm -hmm. is um, is allocated to improve that dynamic. Okay, I want to I want to step back a little bit with something that you said. Um, you you said that schools are losing children. And do you mean that? Do you mean that like um, in, in do you mean that they're physically losing the amount of kids that are coming in, or do you mean more metaphorically that that they're they're just not connecting with them? That's a good question. Do do the schools and how do they lose the children? It is kind of double edged. Mm -hmm. um, one way is that the parents are not uh, involved in their kids' mm -hmm. upbringing, mm -hmm. and and when they're not involved. There, that creates, a, you know, a dilemma for them. Mm -hmm. So then the kids go into private schooling, mm -hmm. they go into homeschooling, mm -hmm. and and that takes them right out of the public school system. Right. And the public school system is a gem. You mm -hmm. know, our district forty three has done so much over the last few years to improve the the scholastic and the you know the results behind the kids mm -hmm. and and we're there to continue that okay so what what do you think is the cause of that loss of students to uh, the private system uh, the, the private system and these other things what is the loss of that if our if our school system school district 43 has been doing a good job um, what is the cause of the loss of students um, th th and again that gets back to communication you know, the communication between the parents and the school teachers right. and and that yeah. that down that top down instead of bottom up. Okay. So if you let the students and the and the parents from the bottom okay. get involved, then then they feel like they're part of the process and they're being heard. Okay, so okay, so I'm I'm I'm, I like to try to be really concrete in trying to understand what someone's saying, and we're being a little bit vague. So when we talk about top down, are we talking the ministry? Are we talking the school board? Are we talking the administration of the school? Are we talking the teachers? Which ones aren't communicating? Well, I think it's right where the rubber hits the road, and okay. that's, that's where the parents are not engaged it's a it's a it, so this is a this is um no. this is a an issue between teachers and the parents right where the the consumer um meets the market that's right that's right now, okay now but that starts from ottawa all the way down doesn't it you know if their priorities I'm not sure that it's it, ottawa if, 
I think it's BC. Is it? <laughs> have well, we have a provincial me. school system. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's it, it's there must be some federal funding. Yeah. I think that that's for buildings and stuff like that, but not so much for the curriculum. I'm not absolutely sure, though, so you'd have to check on that. So that's something that we we both need to learn about. But um, but 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 this is a this is the crux of this conversation to me. Like I think this you're hitting on something that's really important, and I might see it a little bit different. But it's excellent that we're talking about it because. Um, my experience with the teachers and things that I talk to is there's been so much downloaded onto teachers over the past uh, 30 years, right? Classrooms have been eroded and eroded and eroded. And teachers that I know are dealing with people, uh, with, with kids who are coming from a wide variety of different economic backgrounds in any particular school. Um, they're coming... They're coming with kids with all sorts of um, uh, psychological issues. They're coming with kids who have, have economic issues, I said. All sorts of different kinds of students. And they're, they're dealing with people from multiple different languages. So we have coming into the marketplace, into the, the actual store, we're having all of these people and all of this, these issues coming. And now we have parents who are... are rightfully um, wanting more uh, more input and more understanding. They, they want better outcomes. Uh, they just ultimately, the, where the, the bottom line is, parents want better outcomes for their children. That's it. That's what concerns them. If we're taking this to the teacher, do we think that's the teacher's issue? Or is that one of those other levels higher up? Like, I agree, I'm with you. It's a top-down issue, but I'm I think top down is like low management with the customer. That's so I do I want to know your opinion on that or what I'm saying or how you look at that. Well, the um the system needs to um you know uh embrace a, a unified um approach. Mm-hmm. You've got all this diversity, like you were saying, about the different scholastic levels and, you know, the financial situations, the, you know, the languages that are, that are, you know, you know, reflected in our very diverse culture. Yeah. And, and there, it, there needs to be some kind of, of unifying uh, concept or uh, principle. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where the the dialogue between the families and the the teachers needs to open up needs to happen so okay how are you going to build that time into it so the teachers because teachers are already they, they're already carrying a big load how are you going to build time into them so that they have the time to do that they're already teacher comp, teacher parent conferences there's an open line of communication and as i understand it lots of parents don't even show up to those things but there is that spot. How, how, and I'm hitting this home because, because um, I agree with you. I think one of the most important things that we have in our society, in, in society, is education. I think in the tri cities, I think in the past, we absolutely had a gem. Um, my kids are brought up in this, in this area. So I've watched these things happen. So I, I'm in agreement with tons of things that, that, that you're saying, but I'm not sure how that's going to work when all the facilities are there. That's a really good agenda. That's a really good um, uh, thing to want in our school system to bring these people together. But how are you going to do that? And I don't, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm, I know, you know what, I know I'm being tough on you, but I think, I think as we're going into an election, we have to find we have to find our way to do the very best thing we can for everybody in our society. So that's, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm hitting home on this, okay? What I want to know is how we, when we're, there's already a facility there, what is it that we need to communicate better? What, what's, what's missing when the opportunity is already there for parents? Be- so, so, you know, there's probably not much missing but it's the nature of the discussion. Okay. The discussion okay. needs to be um, personal and, and, and needs to have the kind of perspective that 
the teacher can share with the parents about their individual child. That needs to be, you know, it needs to be individual. And, and how is that done? Well, you're right. The teachers are already pressed to the limit. Mm -hmm. You know, they already have opportunities to, to create dialogue. But, um, you know, I think that there, there needs to be a little bit more of a, a like a unifying, uh, a, 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 a simple strategy. Okay. And now they, they send home, um, you know, paperwork or emails all the time. Mm -hmm. I get them. Yeah. And... And um, and it's not a cookie cutter that uh, approach that mm -hmm. needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to look at each and every child and say this is where we're at with them, and and be proactive and and responsive to their individual needs so that okay. they all right pass and so, move ahead with the right skill set. Yeah. So I think I think I'm in agreement with you that there needs to be. Um, uh, a more, uh, a more open and um, individual approach to dealing with every student. But we know that we have a, a we have a large we have large classroom sizes. We have we have a, a pretty full curriculum of things that they have to do already. Um, so there is there's a hole there, and I agree with you. I, I agree that there's an issue there. Um, to, and we both, I think we both just agreed that teachers are to the limit. So something that I believe could come from above, higher up that chain top, for in the top down thing, is um, a smaller class size. How do you feel about something like that? So that it would open up time for teachers, right? That they, they wouldn't have to be talking to parents on a five minute schedule because I got to get through all of these. Now we have some more open time that we can be a little bit more, more um, open and have a more individualistic conversation. How do you feel about something like that? Does that make sense to you? You know, it, what, the, what you're really talking about there is budgeting. And the finances behind uh, the school districts um, priorities yeah. is, um, it, you know, is taut. It's yeah. tight right now. Yeah. And, uh, and how do you lessen that? How is that done? Yeah. So, well, that's actually the question that I'm asking that, you. Well, that's what so, I'm going to So answer. if you go through that and you find out that what this is, is this, there, there could be an issue with how the school systems in British Columbia are funded. Where will you stand on that? Well, it's not necessarily how they're funded. It's how the funds are, um, you know, allocated. spread out. Allocated. Yes. Sure. sure. And, um, and, and so, you know, as a school trustee, you know, we're there to kind of give a bit of a, a, a better perspective. Okay. A, a, new, a fresher perspective. All right. And, and look for solutions where the, um, the outcomes become, uh, you know, measurable. Okay. So okay, and I've and I've hit home, and I and I I've hit home. Uh, I've been hitting pretty hard on this stuff. What other things are on your platform with regards to this? I mean, we've talked about what are the things that we've talked about? We've talked about the top-down approach, communication, looking at um, looking at finances and how things are allocated. If I can, I'm condensing it. What other things are? What are things? Other things are important to you on the school board in terms of what your platform is. Okay, well, my platform in looking at uh, being a candidate for school trustee mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, I, I would like to provide more transparency for the parents mm -hmm. so that they understand where the, where the challenges are within their school sure. and how that's affecting their kids. Sure. You know, the, the transparency and the, you know, the opportunity for, for them to be engaged and involved Mm -hmm. you know, in, in what's happening in their classrooms. Okay. Okay. I, and I've, I'm, while we're sitting here, I've noticed that there, that um, Daniel has a small brochure that people can get. I'm hoping you're knocking on doors to... Yes, we yeah. are. Good, well, good it's not, and, not that easy for a guy in a wheelchair to be knocking on yeah, doors, yeah. but uh, I'll Granted. be sending the kids up there to knock on them. Okay. And then Hopefully get, people get will come out. Yeah. yeah. So, and I see that there are, you have a couple of other names, Jeffrey Way and Belinda Wheatley. My question to you is, are you like a slate uh, that are working towards this? Is, um, well, 
at People's Voice were a bunch of independent um, parents. Voice parents, yeah, uh, were independents, okay. you know, and so we all come to the table with with our own, you know, ideas on how things could be improved. I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm a parent of some kids in grade five, and and uh, you know, and that's that's where you know my passion lies is yeah. in you know in at the elementary level. Sure, you know, so. Um, you know, and Jeffrey, actually, I think Jeffrey's, uh, he's got younger kids and Belinda's got older kids. Yeah. Um, you so know. you're working as independents. And, and I like that idea of having multiple voices where you're sharing ideas and doing that. So you're all working towards, um, and you're all working towards being trustees in school district 43. That's right. Good, that's excellent. Yeah. So um, uh, is there ways that people can get find out more information about um, about yourself and or the slate of that you've got going on at Parents Voice? Well, we are online at okay. parentsvoicebc.ca. Okay. So you can check us out at our website. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, if, if you see us wandering around the streets with our banners or okay. knocking on doors, you can engage us. Sure. We're more than happy to uh, explain to you where we're coming from and, and where we're hoping to take things. Okay. Daniel? I, I've loved this conversation. Um, I think I think it's excellent that people are getting engaged in it, and it's nice to see fresh faces that are coming out and running. I I um, I wish you all the best in thank you very much in your approach to or in your efforts to become elected. I have nothing but respect for people who run. So thank you very much for being here with us on We've Got Issues, and thank you too. As uh, we mentioned before, We've Got Issues is uh, an organization uh, on Tri-City Community TV that is trying to um, speak to the issues that concern the Tri-Cities and nothing uh, concerns the Tri-Cities more than education. So thank you for watching.